today we're going to go over uh, all of my brewing equipment um, and it's going to be stuff that uh, the, the have to haves and it'll be some of the nice to haves uh, so first cleaners five star pbw is a really good cleaner uh, you can see on there it's safe environment friendly it basically it's fragrance free you don't want fragrances or uh, any type of colors or anything like that that can get on your stuff um, fragrances will ruin your beer it'll get on things and it's hard to wash off and then for sanitizing there's this easy clean uh, by the carlson company it's a, it's a really great non-rinse cleaner and uh, you put it in your bucket put a couple gallons in there it's a tablespoon per gallon and it's just it's the best stuff out there that i've found so on brew day the most what you need is six gallon pot with a lid uh, most of your kits don't come with a pot, and so you'll have to get that separately. And then you need your primary fermenter, which is this guy here. So this is a six gallon bucket, and it even says on there one, two, three, four, five gallons, and it will help you fill it up and whatnot. Um, it also comes with a lid. It's a tight sealed lid that you have to press down pretty hard on. And you can see that there's a center, center hole on the lid itself. And so that, you need your airlock so your airlock will go in here and you put water in here up until the line and this uh this guy here will float and it lets air out or lets the gases out but won't let air in and it just pops right in there so one of the nice to haves is if you at the end of the two weeks when it's done with the primary fermenter to get that lid off it's on there tight so there's this little tool right here that you can get and it basically just hooks on there you pry it up and it go around. It just makes it a little easier. It's a little easier on your fingers. So this little guy is just kind of a nice to have. You don't need it. Uh, as far as spoons, you need something to stir with. Um, I use this paddle one. And then this one here I like to use to get the grain bag out. Uh, it's just a little easier. It allows it to drip and uh, it, it's just easier to get it out because you scoop it under and pick the whole thing up all at once. And then you need something to heat the water and heat that pot on. So this is an old turkey fryer. Uh, base that we had that I like to use the these this pot here fits perfectly on here you know, put it on your propane tank you light it and you can adjust the flame and the heat uh, other people I know will do it on like their stove inside if you're gonna use your stove line it with with aluminum foil that way if you have any spillover or boil overs it's a lot easier to clean up versus trying to scrub that that burnt foam stuff off of your off of your stove so that's your basic brew day equipment and next we'll move on to the next stage of uh, secondary fermentation and we'll touch on bottling as well before we move on to the bottling uh, and secondary fermentation they forget about the wart chiller so the wart chiller uh, is a very 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 nice to have otherwise unless it's winter you're gonna have a hard time cooling your beer down um, so it's a hose on both sides you run the cold water through goes around all these coils out the other side, but it picks up all the heat from your wart. And so this one is homemade. You basically find something that's round and sturdy and you get this coiled copper line and you can just start wrapping it around it. Wrap it, wrap it, wrap it as much as you can. Just make sure that it fits in your pot. Um, a buddy of mine has one as well. It's a little bit bigger and it doesn't fit in my pot. So whenever we brew together, I have to make sure that I bring my wart chiller. Secondary fermentation, uh, so this is a glass carboy. It doesn't come with the kits. Uh, you usually have to get it separately. It's a nice to have. You can leave your beer in the fermentation bucket for four weeks or after two weeks, you can move it to the carboy. I like to do that because it gets you a clear beer because after you move it, you'll have a, a level, a couple inches of sludge on the bottom. That's all the hops and all the other ingredients that you put in there that just kind of stay on the bottom. So you move it over, you get cleaner beer and it also, Restirs it up to get the yeast moving a little bit more. Uh, so with the carboy, you have a couple different things. They make this type of cover that goes on here and it just slips on there. That's hard to do when it's not wet. Or there's like a bottle stopper that goes in and you just put it in there. And then you notice the holes on the tops. That's where your airlock comes in. You take your airlock, shove it in the hole, shove it in the hole, and it'll allow the gases to escape but won't let air in. Um, to clean your carboy there's two different options there's this carboy brush 
you know, it goes in and down and then you can move it all around and scrape the sides and whatnot. Uh, but what I like to use, because I never use that thing anymore, is I have this carboy and bottle washer. This fits perfectly on my laundry room sink. And when you turn it on, this moves up, put your carboy or your bottles on, and when it hits this thing, it pushes down and a big stream of water comes out and it washes everything great. Now to move it from the primary fermentation bucket to the carboy, I like to use this type of siphon. So this type of siphon is pretty cool. So you got the hose, you put the hose in the carboy here and use this siphon here where you just pull it and you pump it once and it'll start flowing. Now you'll want to put your bucket up on a table, carboy down on the floor. That way kind of gravity feeds it and it takes it and it fills it up. You don't have to worry anything about it. Just make sure you sanitize everything. Again, that's the most important thing, sanitizing. And here we'll go over the bottling equipment. So when you go to, you know, your, your beer's all done, it's been in the primary fermentation bucket, it's been in the carboy, or it's just stayed in the fermenter for another two weeks, then it's time to bottle your beer. So here's the equipment for bottling. So you'll have your bottling bucket. It's a specific bucket, has a hole on the bottom, and you can see it comes with this tap. So you put that down. You usually keep that high and your bottle's low. You come over here, and this tube goes on the end of the spout. Um, good idea to heat it up first. If you put that in hot water, it'll make the tube pliable and it'll slip right on there. And so when you're bottling, that tube connects to this guy here. Now this has a spring on the end, which allows your beer to come out when you press down. So stick it in the bottle, press down, it'll fill up, fill up, fill up until it reaches the top. And then you pull this up and out. And we'll go over more of that when we uh, bottle beer in another video. So the bottles you need sanitized. So this here is a bottle cleaner slash sanitizer. Now I still use this to clean my bottles, to rinse them out and everything, but you still need to sanitize. So I still use this. You put your sanitizing water in here. That sticks on the bottom. And when you put your bottle on here, that pushes down and it acts as a suction. So it sucks that you're pushing air out, it sucks the water up, squirts it into the bottle. So it coats it perfectly and all through so that your bottle is nice and sanitized. Now after you sanitize it, you need to dry it, which comes into the bottle rack. And the bottles fit on these guys here, all around. It drains into here, you can see kind of a rim of where that uh, the water stripped out and sat on the bottom. Um, you get a little film with the uh, sanitizer, not a big deal, uh, but you can clean it if you want. And just line them all up and that'll be your bottle drying rack so after you fill your bottles with beer you need to cap it i have two different cappers here this is like the old school one it's kind of neat it's a old, little old fashioned where you push this down and you put the pressure on and as you push down that cap closes around the beer bottle it's kind of takes some finesse because you don't want to push too hard but you want to make sure it's nice and capped and so I usually just use the one that came with the kit, which is this guy here. So you put the bottle here that has a little magnet on it and it'll stick to it. And then you can see when you pull this down, that latches around the, the top of the beer bottle, you pull and it caps it down. As you pull this part here, it comes out and that pushes the little, the edge of the the cap around the bottle. So it's real easy, just, and once it's down all the way, take it off, down, and you're done. So that's your basic bottling equipment. Um, pretty easy process. We'll go over how to bottle in a separate video, so please uh, look for that. And next we'll look at what you wanna do if you're kegging. So for kegging, kegging is, uh, is pretty easy, pretty simple, takes a lot less time than bottling. I basically keg all the time now, unless there's a batch that I don't wanna give out. Um, for example, I'll make a Christmas ale and I'll put that in bottles to give out to some buddies and I'll make a second batch for me that I'll put in the keg. So kegging, you need your CO2. Um, they make these in a couple different sizes. This is a 10 pound. They also get a five pound. Um, after that, you need your regulator. Uh, they make multiple regulators. There's a single, there's dual. Um, if you decide you want to go with like nitrous, uh, that's a different whole different ball game with that. This is all CO2. Um, so on mine, I didn't want to sp spend the money on a double 
regulator, but I usually run two kegs. So I took the piping and I just made myself my own little manifold or, you know, stops and, and switches. So gas comes out through here, have a splitter. It'll go two different ways uh, with some shutoffs. So if I have the second keg, I just put that on there, spin it on, and it's good. If I ever need to turn it off like I do right now, you know, I have the, the thing off. And then the other one is on and it's running to the top of this keg here. Uh, I use pin lock, there's pin lock and ball lock. Uh, so just make sure if you get a keg that you get the right uh, fittings for it. And so this, this guy here, this thing spins around. You can't screw it up because the gas has two pins on it and the liquid one has three pins. So you don't have to worry about doing that wrong. Uh, these kegs do come with different uh, O-rings on those. Uh, I change those once every couple uh, months or couple batches, I should say. Uh, this was an old uh, Coca-Cola keg uh, that a buddy of mine found. We cleaned it up, polished it up, and uh, I got a couple of these. And so with the keg, you also have your, 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 your outlet, your tap, so it comes out here, you know, I just have the basic picnic taps. I have plans on someday making something cooler with some, some taps coming out the side of the, the fridge that I use, but I haven't gotten quite there yet. Um, the kegs are pretty easy to maintain. You just rack it straight into here from the carboy and uh, you don't have to mess with priming sugar or anything else because the CO2 will do that. Your CO2, you'll jack it up to like 20 in the beginning to uh, to carbonate it and then you just back it down to like five. Uh, I think I got my set at like five right now. I uh, adjusted with this little guy here. Uh, and we'll go over that uh, when I go to keg my next batch and there'll be another video for that. This one here is an empty keg that I have. Um, you can see there's the two different posts. You can see this one here has three different pins on it. This one here has two, so you can't uh, mix it up. And it's kind of neat the way the kegs work is off of the, uh, the the tap side there's this big metal straw in there you can't really see it uh, if we move it around but you can kind of see it in there and that goes to the bottom so when when you keg if it always feeds from the bottom the gas is pushing down on the liquid which is pushing it up through that straw and then through here to access it there's just this kind of little oval um, lock on here that Easy. Put it in there, get it lined up. Kind of hard to do it one hand, apparently. Have it backwards. No, oh, I just had it backwards. You put it on there, and then you push it down, and it's sealed up. Um, changing the washers is pretty easy. Next time I do it, I'll make a video of that and post it. Uh, but kegging, super, super simple. I uh, just watch that you, you know, don't drink too much because it's a lot easier to drink out of the keg than it is the bottles and keep track of what you're doing. Uh, if you have any questions on any of this beer equipment, uh, please feel free to leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. There's lots and lots of stuff out there. Um, there's hydrometers if you want to measure the specific gravity and figure out what your alcohol content is. I don't really mess with that uh, too much because uh, I figure after I drink one or two beers, I'll, I'll know if it's high alcohol or low alcohol. Uh, it's not something I really get into. And then there's different, uh, all different kinds of carboys and brewing equipment out there. So if you have any questions on any of this stuff, please uh, feel free to leave something in the comments. Uh, hit subscribe and I'll post more beer making videos as, uh, as time allows. Thanks.